if I have the title and Sharnice says, hey, I can help you. I'll sell you. I mean, I'll buy the home from you. Right. Mm -hmm. Cool. And she's the highest bidder. She, now she can go buy that home. She's the title owner and she can go to Rashad like, yo, I'm the title owner. So mm -hmm. unless you're going to give me 30K for this house, I'm moving it. And Rashad can be like, either I'm going to pay you that or no. All right, mm -hmm. cool. Now she's taking that home to Troy because I, because I, she owned the asset. My graduates from my school being Forbes, bag drop. Bag drop. <laughs> A mic drop. Bag drop. Bag drop. All right, guys, welcome back. EYL. This is a reunion episode. <laughs> yeah. Of sorts. So, Sharnice and Byron, this is an interesting situation because it act the first episode actually happened like we didn't plan it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll give you the backstory. About two and a half years ago, we did a networking event in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And um, I think at the Bureau Bar. Yep. So that was our first time. And that was my first time ever in Chicago. Our right. first time in Chicago as Earn Your Leisure. And it was a vibe. Mm -hmm. It was packed. Yeah. Everybody came out, showed love. And um, Byron actually had walked up to me, introduced <laughs> himself, and was telling me like what he does. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... You know, it happens all the time. People do that all the time. Yeah. But what made it interesting <laughs> is that it's something that I'd never really heard of with mobile mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. investing. Thanks. And I never heard, up until that point, I was calling it trailer. So the mobile home investing thing, I'm like, all right, this is interesting. So we had some time and I'm like, yo, we should do this episode. I think I told Mike, like, yo, I met these people. They do mobile homes. That That's like interesting. We should do mm -hmm. this. They're like, when you want to do it? I'm like, tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. They're like, all right, well, screw it. Let's do it. So, a death and death. <laughs> I think yeah. we spoke after that, too. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. like, yeah, they said we're going to do it. We're going to do it then. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, we actually did it. We And we didn't have like a studio, so we did it in their home. Yeah. 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 Move yeah. furniture. Actually, yeah. actually, we went, we went to do the Downing Brothers, and we saw mm -hmm. them. And like, yo, where are we going to do this? We're going to do it here? Nice. Like, y'all can pull up to the house. Yeah. Like, yeah. All right, we don't know Chicago like that, but we'll pull up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we, we went to the South Side. We got it done. And it actually turned out, to, for a long time, it was the number one episode on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. For a while. Definitely. Um, I still in the top 10, I think. For sure. Right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it's one of these episodes that just caught wildfire. Mm -hmm. and number 41 for those not in the know. Stop playing. Yeah, episode, <laughs> episode. Stop playing, ride or die. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, but since then, um, you know, a lot has changed. Mm -hmm. So, since then, they got engaged. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations on that, y'all. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right, he did good, y'all. There, there you go. Number one. <laughs> right. They moved on up from the south <laughs> side. Yeah. Moving on up. From the south side to downtown. They got a whole vibe downtown. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, driving Range Rovers, living, living the dream. Um, but what also happened during that period of time, and this is the interesting part. So at the end of the episode, so when we first met them, they was investing in mobile homes, mm -hmm. like individual mm -hmm. mobile homes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the episode, they said like their goal was to transition and, and to buy a mobile home park. Mm -hmm. And now that, that's actually the reality. And they actually own two mobile home parks, mm -hmm. right? Facts. With two mm -hmm. more mobile home parks under contract. Yes, sir. With a total of 173 mobile homes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I thought it would be a perfect time to have a follow-up conversation. What's your plans on scaling um, for your for your personal uh, business brand? Mm -hmm. Man, so we definitely want mobile home parks. Mm -hmm. um, so the larger goal with that is to get an acquisition where we find somebody who has a portfolio, 10, 20 mobile home parks that's looking kind of just to retire, right? Um, and just pretty much purchase that portfolio and just build from there and really open up the floodgates for more people to invest in mobile homes. And throughout that, you know, they, they have education. They've been teaching people um, on social media. So this is a yeah. dope. But before you go there, right? I remember, like, after the episode, yeah, I did, like, a free webinar. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to sign up for this. And I forgot that day. Mm -hmm. And then I couldn't sign up for a free webinar for the next three months. <laughs> Make sure the holidays, man. <laughs> I was like, damn. A lot of Y'all packed shit. us out. Yeah, bro, it was crazy. <laughs> Every no, week. Nothing was the same. <laughs> nothing was the same. <laughs> That's the <laughs> album we should have had. Real. <laughs> nothing was the same. <laughs> the same. The EYL effect. The yes. EYL effect. The EYL effect. That, <laughs> that was the original EYL effect. One of them. It really was. Them, Alex. Trap. 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 After that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people caught that, that whole, title. Yeah, that yeah, that's a fact. Wave. Yeah. That, that, those that two a, months were crazy. That initial yeah. title wave. Um, so, yes. 
this episode, I'm looking forward to it because it's the transition. And now we're going to have the conversation of mobile home park investing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So first and foremost, welcome back. Man, thank y'all for having yeah, us. Man. Welcome, appreciate welcome y'all. y'all. Welcome All right. Yeah, so we, I'm like, you know the bathroom. I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> like we never been yeah, here, I Troy. Like, Come man, on. My fault. My fault. My fault. We in the man. mecca right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we've seen each other so many times. I'm yes. like, yeah. 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 Yes. This this is where it all started for us. Upstairs. Nice. Now we downstairs. Nice. We're on down. <laughs> 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 yes. So all right. So let's get into this conversation. So. How you said you was going to do it, but how how did you actually get into mobile home park investing? Yeah, man. So it was dope to declare, you know, on the episode. But um, you know, after that, it was a huge influx, right? We had a lot of people hitting us up, and actually, our partner had reached out to us, like, "Yo, you know, I, I saw the episode. You know, you guys knew what you were talking about. I have some communities um, in Indiana. I, if you want some houses, you know, come out and take a look." One took a look. The deal didn't really work. He was gonna give me nineteen free houses. I couldn't find anybody to do the work out there. Mm. So I'm like, yo, man, I'm, but I'm interested in getting this space, man. So if you come across a deal, like, man, we, you know, we game. Cause I was looking, but I kind of needed that guidance as well. Mm. And so sure enough, that email came across. Like, yeah, I got this 51 unit, um, you know, <clears throat> um, I'm looking for a few partners, 50,000 buy-in. <laughs> like say less like let's go ahead and get in and jump right onto this yeah. and uh man shout out our partner charlie man he ended up quarterbacking that deal and we got a first hand to see how everything was done so we can learn the process yeah. um but again shout out to y'all you know for being a connect on that because you know he yeah, saw nice. us you know from eyl and trusted us and man that's how we ended up making that first one happen so you got fifty thousand dollars for 51 homes so he originally he initially raised 350 okay. um the park we got that per, uh that part sorry the purchase price uh for 1.1 1. 1. Okay. so we had to raise 30 percent of that uh, and put up to 350k so we was part you know partially investors on that yeah. and um yeah man we end up locking it down uh we went that's the video we actually have on youtube where we went to go see the park and uh man it was it was just it was special seeing you know what we really said you know what was gonna happen is that the, the so that's that's the video when we're, we're, you're walking through and people don't know like y'all are yep. yeah yeah they say I'm talking crazy y'all. yeah 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 got you yeah so what all right so walk me through that process of buying the first mobile home like um, how much did it cost again mobile home park so that mobile home park was 1.1 million so um how'd you get the financing so we used a, uh, a small community bank so that park is actually in greensburg pa and that's one thing um if you're looking for mobile home parks you either want to go to a credit union uh or a credit union or a small local bank because they're more they're more willing to finance a smaller deal right mm-hmm. and uh also there's more lenders that come out now so he we end up locking up the finance and again 30 percent down um a few of us put up you know 50k a piece and that's how we end up locking that one down so the Indiana deal didn't work because you didn't have anybody to, I guess, refurbish those the properties. Yeah, Correct. We didn't yeah. Have a handyman. Any handy, so like when y'all got this one, it was mm-hmm. like, all right. Number one, was there a lot of work that had to be done, and if so, like, did you have a team on the ground, or did the partners come together? How that work? Yeah. So the beautiful thing about buying a mobile home park. What we, what we always looking for is like buying a business. So it had intricate pieces. It had uh, already a team of repairmen on site. It had a park manager in place. So it had equipment. So for us going in, uh, we just add value. So the biggest thing we had to do was fill the empty homes, right? Or fill, or fill the empty pads, which are empty lots with no homes on it. So that was part of part of uh, when we got the actual financing for it, we wanted to go ahead and have enough, you know, cash so that way we can put new homes on there as well. Uh, so the property actually has space for you to add to it. Yep. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Now, you said that there's a couple of roles that you need to have in the park. Can we run that, that down again? So like, yeah. like a property manager, I'm mm-hmm. assuming, but what other roles do we need to have if we're buying an entire park? For sure. So I would say with buying a park, you definitely... So you definitely want to have your park manager in place, but to take a step back before going through the process of actually purchasing a mobile home park, you definitely want to have a great CPA. You want to have a great attorney who understands commercial real estate, but really, uh, excuse me, an attorney who has done mobile home parks and who has worked with um, investors who have purchased land. So you want to have that. Um, And then you want to have a great wholesaler who can do the proper due diligence. Mm -hmm. So before 
let's just say if I'm looking online, right? So I'm gonna drop a few sources for people who wanna just source where they can find mobile home parks available. One website is mobilehomeparkstore.com. It's a great website where you can go and just source any type of parks that, that's available. So nine times out of 10, who's listing the parks on there is the brokers. Mm. So the beautiful thing about brokers is that once you build that relationship and you communicate with them, they'll have access to what we call pocket listing. So pocket listings we know is off market deals. So they'll have even some off market deals or parks that may not even be listed online. So that's another way just to kind of source some deals that's again not listed. So be once you say once you see, excuse me, a park that you're interested in, the first step is due diligence. You want to get in contact with the municipality, so the uh, county records department, make sure that the land is zoned for mobile homes. Uh -huh. So you want to make sure that it's properly zoned. You want to make sure that there's no code violations. Same thing, you want to contact your county health department to come out and assess the water. You want to make sure that the water has no code violations as well. So that's just kind of like the back end of the due diligence that's needed before you even looking to purchase in a mobile home community. All the things we're not thinking of. Right. <laughs> right. <Okay>. Right. <laughs> so, um, I think you, you sell that? Huh? Yes. So we end up selling that park. We, we got it in July of 2020. We end up uh, selling that one in November of 2021. Uh, we end up selling it. We, so we end up selling it for 2.3 million. So you, you purchased it for 1, 1 million. Mm -hmm. You sold it for 2.3. Yep. So you you made a 1.3 million dollar profit. Yes. So how did that happen? Why did it appreciate so much? So after the pandemic, what happened was the mobile home park space was one of the best asset classes in real estate as far as collecting full rent roll because it's affordable housing. So people were still paying their you know paying their rent. And so it made it very attractive, mm -hmm. very attractive. So now you saw larger players, the Blackstones, the Northwestern Mutuals, these large institutions are starting to come into the play. Like, whoa, hold on, like, these cash flowing, these some decent assets. Mm -hmm. So now larger players, so now you have, you know, investors like us and, you know, other investors like, uh-oh, hold on, I think we could put, we could put it on top dollar now. Because even still to this day right now, like mobile home parks, it, it just, the prices went up, you know, 50, 100% just because of um, the cash flow. And so, um, you know, just with that, it was just a hot time to sell. And we ended up putting it on the market. And we actually had some issues kind of getting um, houses filled, you know, with the whole, um, you know, the rent moratorium and things like that. We had a few tenants not paying and things, but we were still, you're talking about able to mm -hmm. double our profit. That's crazy. Is there um, Section 8 tenants there? So not in our particular park. So there's very rare that you're going to find Section 8 tenants. Uh, and the reason why is because more so there, Section 8 is more geared to for apartments. All right. So when it comes to mobile homes, you have some, very some, but we really the only affordable housing sector that you don't necessarily need Section 8 that you can afford. So we we don't really get too much help from the government and things like that. Now, I knew Ben Carson was actually talking about well, when they when the administration was in, he wanted to put manufactured homes to allow that, you know, because people can pay off their homes and then the government would pretty much save money. But that didn't get passed. So we still hoping that this administration look into it. So when y'all bought the, the mobile homes, we talked about insurance, obviously, because it's mobile is not really really like mm -hmm. a house right right are this do the same rules apply when we're talking about a park are we like how do we ensure that what's like what's the taxes on that is, mm -hmm. it, is it the similar situation as if we're buying individual mobile homes no so the taxes what, what i love about the taxes especially depend most parks are in rural america right yeah. so the taxes are cheap i think on our particular uh park our taxes is less than seventy thousand dollars right on that asset for the year, for the year. And so the people pay personal property taxes. So if they, whoever owns, they don't necessarily have to pay the land tax. We pay the land tax. But again, you're talking about less than $7,000 for over five acres, right? So. <laughs> <laughs> That's close for right? <laughs> Wow. So again, it's, a, it's a, definitely a great you know, way to save taxes. Um, and then you talk about insurance. Normally, for us, we also, we do pay insurance, right? But for each individual home, we make sure our tenants have insurance on you know that their mobile home is covered as well mm -hmm. so a mobile home park owner do you own every home so for us the goal is not to right you have some mobile home park owners that do but the reason for us we want to have our tenants to own their homes because what it helps us to do we just own the land we're leasing mm -hmm. the dirt so okay that's interesting <laughs> so the 1.1 was just for land with homes included yeah yeah With, so, so you did own the home so we did and then what we know okay. so what we do from there is that's when we go in and we pretty much create seller financing so we can come in and say hey listen you know what we see you've been renting from us 
let us let us help you own your own asset now, mm-hmm. right? So now we can help them. You know, again, they'll have it, put them on a monthly term. They own their home. They have their title. And so now, again, they just pay for the lot rent, which is what they pay for, like the amenities of the park. And the reason why we do that is, for one, the responsibility. Because the more homes we own, if anything goes wrong, then my maintenance men have to go to each individual house to fix. But as a homeowner, they're going to take more pride into their house. They're more likely not to tear it up less. And then the beautiful thing about it, when it's like when we want to sell, now they're able to get bank financing because a bank is more inclined to loan to more uh, tenant-owned homes than versus park-owned homes because it's, it's basically less risk. So when you, how many homes was on that? Again? 51. 51. So you, you owned all 51 homes at the beginning of it? No. Oh, man. So I think the one, I don't know how to accurate number, but I think it was less than 15 homes I know okay. that, that was actually, yeah, we owned. Ones, they already, people already owned them. 10 homes, yep. Yeah. And then you sold them back to the owner, to mm-hmm. the people that was renting? Yep. And when you, so when you sold it, they they didn't get any homes with the, the person that brought it. Or, hey, Ernest. Did you know that the black community has $2.7 trillion of spending power? Are you ready to see what you can do when you combine and recirculate our resources to expand the pool of black excellence? I know I'm ready. And that's why we've partnered with Greenwood, the in-demand black-owned digital banking platform. Greenwood's namesake was founded in 1906, built from the brilliance of black dreamers looking to create a self-sufficient community in the Greenwood district of Tulsa, Oklahoma, a.k.a. Black Wall Street. Today, Greenwood is a digital banking platform with the mission to strengthen the black dollar using the same community reinvestment strategies of the original Greenwood district. And it's powered by a best-in-class mobile app that allows you to bank from anywhere. So, earners. If you're ready to build a new legacy of black economic achievement, go to bankgreenwood.com slash EYL and sign up to be a part of the new Greenwood community. That's bankgreenwood.com slash EYL. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Head over there now. So they technically do. So when you buy a mobile home community, right, like the guarantee is, hey, I'm buying it with these homes. It's going to pay us this land fee. Um, nine times out of ten, with the community is good, people not trying to move their mobile home out of there. Um, you don't want, I don't want to, I don't like saying because they can't afford to move their home out of there because sometimes that is the case. Mm-hmm. Um, but if the community is good, they want to stay there. So you technically, like for example, you're looking, it will say like a 71 pad community, right? Even though the homes may be still tenant owned, mm-hmm. it's just you know that those is the, that is the lot rent that's coming in. So that was the deal. That was one deal, but it's mm-hmm. a team situation going on. So yes. while you're closing that deal, I know you had a couple more parks in 2020, right? So like, what was that process like? The search process, how are we getting financing to get all these, right? Because I think it was how many we got in 2020? Four. It was four. Four joints. Yeah. <laughs> so the cool thing is that our one partner he quarterbacked that those deal as well. So the first park that Byron's been talking about, that was one park, and then he hit us back up a few months later and was like, "Hey, I have a three park deal." You know, same situation. He's going to quarterback. He has a team involved as well. He hit us like, hey, you know, same buy-in, 50K. He hit us up. We had the money. That's just kind of how that happened. <laughs> and then you, you sold one of those, all right? Yeah, yeah, so that – I love that deal. <laughs> <laughs> so that deal – so those three parks we got for 1.8. All three of them? All three for 1.8. Uh, Greens, Greensburg, PA, uh, so right around the Pittsburgh area, all three. Mm. So – one of the parks we just actually sold again right after we sold um via uh vista vista view we sold it for 3.5 <laughs> so that one park paid for all so now we just own two two other parks free out and clear and it's just we just building up equity on those how, how many units in each one when you say vista view i'm thinking a white man can't jump <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what sydney dean lives photos not new um but how many how many uh how many lots were in this and in, in the other two was it like a 50 another 50 or it 70 was 48 and then what was the other two? uh f- it was 48 and man. i want to say it was 50 and 52 because we had 172 left i gotta yeah. pull up my calculator put my phone over there and since they all i mean you invested in, in a similar area does that obviously make it easier for you now to just check on everything oh yeah, yeah. some people might hear that episode yeah. they probably heard your episode like yo there's something that happened in in Virginia, there's mobile home parks mm-hmm. in Virginia, mm-hmm. and I live in Chicago. Yeah, right. That, I mean, I don't know if that may be the best investment, right? Because I mean, I got to get to this place just if there's an issue. Yeah. So uh, the cool thing, our partner Charlie actually moved out too. He was in uh, in the Bay, 
and he moved out to Pittsburgh. Like, yo, you know what? I could be closer. I could be hands on. Yeah. So that's the cool thing about it. And like to your point, the best thing is to we tell people starting out should be to become a passive investor. That's what we did. We became passive investors because an owner operator, you do have more responsibility. You are more hands on. And if you don't have the experience, we see a lot of owner ops kind of come in this business and fail because it's like, oh yeah, I got to park. Yo, I'm, I'm getting all these units for this lower price, and now. I don't have the resources. What do I go next? I don't have the people to repair. I don't have all these different things. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them kind of, the they don't know the homes. <laughs> they don't know the homes. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So, but after that, you went on like a dry spell for a little bit, right? Trying to find <laughs> parks or what, what happened with that? Yeah. So for myself, I'm like, you know what? This is dope. We got them. This year I went on, uh, Shan's podcast like I'm getting 10 this year declared it <laughs> and when I tell you every offer I was outbid uh, or it just didn't work you know that I was doing we we're conducting due diligence and it just didn't line up and uh, it was a tough year you know pride wise I'm like man I said I was gonna get 10 and each month each quarter I'm saying I'm just like yo like what's that 2021 what's going on? 2021 yeah. And I'm just like, man, this and is. We was flying out a lot. Remember, yeah. <laughs> back and forth down to Atlanta, different parts of Georgia, looking at parks. We mm -hmm. looked at a few in North Carolina. But the thing too is that some of the parks that we would see via online, mm -hmm. when we got in person, we like, yeah. whoa, it's way more <laughs> maintenance is going to be mm -hmm. needed, you know, done on this land versus what the pictures look like. So that was another reason that I felt like it kind of held us back a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So you, I mean, that's good that you said that because when you you see the properties and you're like, mm -hmm. damn. All right, it's going to be more than I thought. Mm -hmm. How much reserves do you need, like when you're getting a park, right? Because people say like, oh, we can get in the deal. Yeah, fifty mm -hmm. to get into, mm -hmm. it. but like, yeah, we might need some money for these renovations, and we might have to need money to pay salaries for mm -hmm. the yeah. property managers and all these people that are, that are going to be part of this 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 unit now. Like, yeah. what's that like? So the key thing, you know, like you said, leading those reserves, you know, depends on what 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 type of funding you need. They do that's why the due diligence is so important, right? We want to mm -hmm. see what's all every worst case scenario that can happen, right? A lot of times like it comes to, you know, you see a lot of older older sewer systems or they may be on uh septic or well water. And so you, you definitely want to budget, you know, f for those problems. Um so again when a reserve it really depends on how many units. Um so let's say I got I'm looking for a twenty five unit, right? And hypothetically let's say a twenty five unit is gonna cost me seven hundred and fifty K. Um, so depending on if I know, you know, the, the septic well, I know I want I want a few new houses. I can get the houses financed, but now I may try to raise a, you know another 150k, uh, just to, like you said, just to have those for those reserves. And then normally salaries, what we want to do is, like I said, a mobile home park. We look at it like this: I'm buying a business. So if it's already cash flow and is already paying out, either a am I cutting costs, or you know, or would I add value and bring on more people to the team? Yeah, I feel like the property manager becomes like the RA. Right. Pretty much, that yeah. yeah. Right. Yo, you want to live for free, bro? Exactly. Yeah, She's right. a psychologist. So talk about the land fee. Mm -hmm. So yeah, talk about that. Yeah. So you know the average lot rent in America is three seventy five, right? Three hundred seventy five dollars. Yep. Mm -hmm. The lot rent is that's how much they're paying just to mm -hmm. park their their mobile home. There. Yep. Yeah. Right. So similar to HOA, right? Just like a condo, townhome. Um, and so the cool thing about ours in PA, all of ours were f 425 and up. Um, and it's all about location, right? It, it's You can have, for example, like in New York, I, we've had students that we've seen that their lot rents are like 725, you know, mm -hmm. 750. I mean, just up and higher. Whereas California, San Diego, maybe $1,200. Wow. Illinois, we see around like the 550, mm -hmm. 600 range. So, um, the purpose of that, again, like you said, parking, making sure that their mobile home, they're leasing, but it comes with, for example, so we're in a colder climate. We know we got snow removal, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it could be trash. It could be amenities, like, for example. Ice freeze. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and then, you know, for the, for profit as well, you know, for, for us as the park owner. Um, but normally what we're, we're starting to see, though, this is one thing I can say I don't really like about the industry. Some people, so let's say, you know, Ernie Leisure buys a mobile home community, and the current lot rent is... 275 and you're like you know what we want to come in and kind of get you know get it up but you guys come in and raise it and be like, all right next year it's going to be 375 so you raise about 100 dollars. so now that kind of affects you know your people coming in even though you know you're going to add value so one thing i like i like when i see like even with us we make small increases maybe anywhere from you know 10 10 to 25 dollars on the high end and then that way over time they see the value but when you come in and just say hey you know what you're gonna raise it 100 bucks it's like yo like this I, I can't afford this right now. And now you're seeing people almost like yeah. they parks are getting gentrified. It's like the 
Yo, it's under new management. Yep. <laughs> Thanks. So you, you said by state, right? Like mm -hmm. depending on the state that mm -hmm. that fee can go up. So if I'm starting, right? Well, obviously, if I've done the mobile homes and I've done mm -hmm. that, and I'm a passive investor, if I'm looking to raise much cash, do I start in a state that is known for? Do I start in California where the the, the, the price is a lot higher, or do I start in New York where you said it could be like seven twenty five, or do I say you know what? Let me grow to that. I'll start in uh, Indiana. Or, like an mm -hmm. idol or something like that. No disrespect to those states. No. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, if I was looking to get into a park and if I do live in a market that I know is a little bit higher, I would start in like a Georgia or North Carolina, kind of like the southern states. You'll see like that cheaper lot rent or like you said, Indiana or even like some parts of Illinois, but like southern Illinois, you'll see like the 375 and the 400. But again, you got to go out to rural America in order to see those prices. <laughs> So um, let's talk about like some issues that you might have as far as owning a, a park, repairs and maintenance. Mm -hmm. What's the what's the deal with that? How does that work? So roads, right? Depending on how old some you come on some of these parks is you know just gravel, uh, even some not even just no pave, no nothing, right? There's just dirt. Um, so you can have issues with that. Definitely, you know, plumbing. If you if you're buying a park with that has you know septic or well water, you know, you always have to make sure that water is tested um, and make sure you know because again, you would hate to your water's tamper now your tenants without water. Talk, talk about that the test the, the water being tested. Yeah. So with uh, with well water, um, it has to meet definitely for the county. It has to meet a certain grade, right? Mm -hmm. And so you know, again, if you if you're not if you're not maintaining that, you know, on when it's supposed to be maintenance and, and things like that, that water can get tampered. Um, and you know, that's, that's one of the worst, that's the one of the worst case scenarios, you know, imagine you have a community and they out of water. Right. And so, um, you know, that's the issue. Same thing with septic that can get backed up. Um, so that we, uh, so we always try to look for, right. <laughs> that's, a, that's, yeah. that's a bad thing. That's right. A very bad thing. And so we try to look for parks that, come with city water and uh, city water and city sewer because now we know the city has our back so if something comes out that's the city's responsibility versus us as owners now you know we have to try to go in and get this septic and well um, I think other problems tenants you know I mean you, you know I think I remember you saying the first you was like yo like Ozark right <laughs> and, and then you you do <laughs> you do have communities like that right you yeah. do have communities that you know it's, it's, it's a trap house or a meth house you know yeah. and it could kind of corrupt the, the, the neighborhood you could have some bad tenants in there that are you know that uh, just cause a lot of trouble um, anything you can think of baby and then I would say the houses. I think oh, yeah. uh, what happens too is a lot of you know investors they purchase these large communities where you may have a seventy five pad and fifty of the lots are filled, but now you have twenty five homes that need renovations. And if you don't understand how to renovate the home and just the process of buying and selling the individual mobile home, that's a maintenance within itself as well. Yeah. So that's why we see a lot of park owners like shy away from investors. Where us being you know started out investing in individual homes. We see the value of allowing our students, allowing investors in our park to come and actually renovate mm -hmm. the house and then allowing them to buy and flip it or they can put them on payments. They go ahead and get their profit and then we still collect our land fee to lot rent. Yeah. I had like two questions in there. That was a lot. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. So like topography is something that uh, mm -hmm. you know I, I've done before. Mm -hmm. Very expensive, mm -hmm. right? For those not, you know, it's like when you have to test mm -hmm. the soil, which mm -hmm. for you it means everything, yes. Yes. right? If your mm -hmm. land is sinking, that's an issue. It's like, that, have you encountered that? Or is that something that you guys do when you're doing the due diligence as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that is something we do. Now ha we haven't encountered it, and and now most states what they require is you have to have a certain amount of cement. So most, so the cool thing about mobile homes again, since they're mobile, when they're when they are, you know. Uh, I'm gonna say bus, but when they are transported, <laughs> when they transport it in, right? Um, normally, each each unit has a concrete slab, and that concrete slab is the you know for stability for the home. So again, so you won't have the sinking. Yeah. Um, so the thing you know now is a requirement because that what was happening. You have homes you can go into the park and you can see they uneven, they kind of topple because up, like mm -hmm. you said, because of what's selling. Yeah. So that is definitely part of the due diligence. You do have to test the soil. Yeah, don't play around. The second part of it was like as far as having tenants that might cause issues in mm -hmm. it. What is the eviction process like in a mobile home setting? Like we know different states have mm -hmm. it for apartments and you know mm -hmm. condos, but what is it like for the mobile home parks? Yeah. So very similar, yeah. uh, very similar, you know, w when it comes to evictions. Um, you know, I, I will say 
we've seen we've now <laughs> the difference is they can file earlier in states like louisiana um where they can file t if you're behind 10 days they can get the process started and there's a lot of states like that when we first came we was like man, who regulating this right like how is this allowed but you okay. you see it as almost you know anywhere from 10 to 30 days where they can get that process started so like what's the cash flow that you're looking for like on average i know it depends but is it a play for appreciation or is it a play for cash flow both mm -hmm. um so cash flow you coming in um for us you know we like anything that's at least eight thousand dollars cash flow on because we know we can go add value if it's empty houses we know we can get that cash flow up to anywhere from 10 to 12. um for example our uh our first one that we sold that cash flow we had when we purchased it that cash flow it was right at 11 we end up getting up to seventeen thousand a month mm -hmm. um, and that's for the park for the park mm -hmm. yep so you, seven Seventeen thousand net. Yeah, seventeen thousand net. Okay, and you said what was it before? It was eleven. So what made you? What? How did that increase to seventeen thousand? So for uh, we did increase the lot rent. Uh, we were able to fill fill the empty pads that we had, um, as well as he had. Um, no, that was actually that was the first two. Cause I was thinking about the other park where they end up adding value, like no, the vending really machines just, and stuff. Once you once you fill the empty houses and you get either a tenant buyer or you get somebody else in there, that kind of makes up for the missing lot rent that you're originally not getting by having those pads empty. Mm -hmm. Now you you said something about vending machines. Mm -hmm. What's going on, Ernest? Look, at 26, I made one of the most important decisions of my life. That's right. I didn't have family at the time, but I did have a life insurance policy. A wise man told me life insurance isn't about the people who die. It's about the people who live. It's one of the best ways to secure generational wealth for your family's future. And it makes perfect sense why people get life insurance, especially term coverage, which surprisingly is affordable. Why not pay a little bit each month to secure the future of the people you love long term? If you're asking yourself that question, I want you to check out Ladder. Ladder makes it impressively fast and easy to get coverage. You just need a few minutes and a phone or a laptop to apply. Ladder's algorithms work instantly, so you'll know right away if you're approved for coverage. No hidden fees, and you can cancel any time. And since life insurance costs more as you age, now is the time to get started. So check out Ladder today to see if you're instantly approved. Go to ladderlife.com slash EYL. That's L-A-D-D-E-R life.com slash EYL. That's ladderlife.com slash EYL. You know how this works. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Secure your family's future right now. That's a play. Somebody been watching oh. EYL. Yeah, that's a play. That's so a play. Put the on the, the you can put that's a it's a value add. Again, I'm you know again, man, we on EYL, so we got to get some gems. <laughs> yeah. So you know, honestly, a lot, you can do a lot of value adds, right? Like yeah. I said, you can add vending machines. Um, one thing that we, we incorporate, about food trucks. yeah, incorporate is buying mm -hmm. a you know older food truck. Now really you can have it. yeah <laughs> food truck, and now you can actually have you know one of the tenants who's one of the best cooks to come and now serve that. So it's a lot of different value adds. Even I'm, I'm gonna give them a play. You get, so now instead of having an actual convenience store, you could purchase an R, a older RV, mm -hmm. a camper, and turn that into a convenience store. So now it's mobile, so that can go get its own snacks and fill up. And now, again, because the biggest thing you want to do for a community, you really want to have a community. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, I get it. We look at it as investors, but for us, it's the community. Like, what can we do for the people? How can we add value for the people? And those are the few, few ways we to do it, just finding out what they like. Yeah, that's a good idea for sure. Because it's like people gotta instead of going to the store, you can just have everything that you need. So in these mobile home communities, what is the vibe? It's just like five, eight. How big is it? Eight acres, five acres, something like that. Uh, five. So, mm -hmm. so five yeah. acres of just land with seventy mobile homes. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's it. There's nothing like it's what are they doing? Yeah. <laughs> Going to work. Right. They living Watch a regular life. Right. <laughs> so, right. so one thing I will say, what I love about mobile, they're more, it's a, it's a more tight knit family, right? Mm -hmm. Because again, sometimes they are stereotype, right? You live in a, you live in a trailer or things like that. Right. But down South, you see it more often, but in the community, the community is more tight knit than a lot of times than we think of. Um, like you said, they may, you know, go to work activities, yeah. depending on where they're I guess that's kind of a jaded question. You know, coming from New York, it's like, I'm thinking like, yeah. you gotta go to a restaurant, you gotta have a bar, you gotta be able to go to the gym. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like everything is in walking distance. Mm -hmm. Or right. at least driving distance. Right, right. So, but I, I guess most people, if you're in middle America, exactly. a lot of stuff is not, mm -hmm. it's not like you live in a city anyway. Yeah, exactly. Right. Even if you live in a house, you don't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What if we could turn one of those, like, like those fast food franchises into the mobile unit? Mm. And 
add to the property? What? Well, like what? So let's say you had like like McDonald's, McDonald's, and we mm -hmm. had a mobile truck that came. Same way that they cook, like the fast food yeah. truck does. Now you bring that to the property. I was really thinking entertainment wise too, like yeah. maybe once a month. You know, like they yeah. have those mobile screens. Like yeah, you just do that for you the could, community. Oh, it's a lot of plays. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of plays. And, and depends. Yeah, so yeah. especially down south, like those down south so it's their community so you have all age communities and then you have 55 plus communities mm -hmm. 55 plus again anybody who's 55 plus retired they like living amongst each other yeah. so in a lot of those communities you have different you know star you have five star communities you know one star communities one star is the like yo i don't think i'm driving yeah. enough <laughs> <laughs> and then you got the five star you like yo these mobile homes because the, the nice. new stuff is crazy well, i'll talk about that but yeah. so now you they have entertainment right they have like we we did business in remember in Indiana they had a clubhouse so they'll have different you know different weekly things that they'll do in the clubhouse mm -hmm. so you have mobile home communities that you know are family based and they definitely have you know different things or I was gonna say even the one our first park that we did business in in Illinois they had a pool a mm -hmm. swimming pool for the kids like a basketball court like it seems small to us but like mm -hmm. you said like individuals who live in like rural America like that is their entertainment mm -hmm. I got a bunch of ideas so <laughs> don't go crazy is, mobile homes I was always thinking the whole point is to be able to drive yeah mm -hmm. yeah right. but you, I'm hearing that most people don't leave right. Mm -hmm. So wh why do you have a mobile home if you're not going to be driving? So the difference. So yeah. mo so the ones you talk like the driving, those are the, the RV. RVs, RVs yeah. yeah. And so the mobile like more so manufactured home, but the reason we we still call them mobile because again they be, be moved to a spot, but those are the double wise, the single wise that you see. Those are more so um that So, so can you can you drive them? No. No. Oh, so they're just okay. Mm -hmm. they they're they're called moved. mobile because they can be moved. Exactly. Right. Yep. They're not actually like driving. Mm -hmm. We're not no. going on a road trip with them. Nope. And they are exactly. they assemble <laughs> in a um they like assemble tiny homes. like a tiny home, right? Yeah. And they assemble in a factory. Yeah. So again, it's just like for example, like Clayton Homes, uh that's B Warren Buffett's company, they cranking out some factories can crank out thirty homes a day. So they're cranking them out, you just like you know, just like a <laughs> like a car and, yeah. and then they move them to the location. Well, you know, it's one of these things that we're in a housing crisis right now mm -hmm. and inflation is at all time high. Yeah. And the housing market is at all time highs also. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people can't afford to live places. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, because how much do these things cost now? Like how much mobile homes cost now yeah. on average? So average, you go ahead. I was going to say use average. So when we first started, you can really find a used mobile home for less than $5,000. So I would say that we definitely ran, ran the market, market up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say, Thanks, yeah. right. <laughs> shout out to y'all. <laughs> but no. but so now, it right. Thanks. But now I would definitely say you can still find a mobile home, a used mobile home for less than $10,000. Now a newer mobile home, like a 2022, that really depends on the make and model, but I would say average, the lowest we've seen is like 30,000 upwards to like 50,000. And how mm -hmm. many square feet? So anywhere from 700, 700 square feet mm -hmm. to a double wide on a high end, almost 2,000 square feet. So that could be like two to three bedrooms. Two oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Square feet, that's like two bedrooms. You can get four yeah, bedrooms out of those. Four bedrooms. And so they yeah. come with laundry units inside of it too? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Everything. They have laundry units? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what I love about it, imagine. about a mobile laundry Hey, unit. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring that to the community. So the beautiful thing about it. <laughs> that's a good idea. Right. <laughs> like most, so after, definitely after the 80s, everything was made just like a like an apartment. Right. So imagine just a, a longer apartment with no upstairs, downstairs. It's just it's just this unit. And then one thing is she said the average about 10,000. But I know our your uh, your viewers from California, from Massachusetts, New York, they're going to be like 10,000 where? Because it's all about location. The same mobile home that we can go get for ten thousand dollars, let's say in Florida and San Diego, that costs seventy thousand mm -hmm. dollars so it's all about location right mm -hmm. so a lot of places they, they don't see that but i always tell people if your mobile home costs seventy thousand dollars that means your single family home is at least four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars so it's a huge gap and it's still it's always gonna be an affordable option so okay so i was reading and they said uh the mobile home parks is uh low risk and high demand mm -hmm. yeah low risk high demand so I'm assuming it's low risk because there's not a lot going on. Mm -hmm. And like you said, people don't usually leave yeah. mm -hmm. in high demand because we just talked about. It's a housing crisis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a very affordable way to live. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's actually like something that is, is it's getting bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's mm -hmm. So it's 
especially what's happening right now, right? Like I said, we're seeing prices are going up, inflation. People still need a you know affordable place to live, and so it is becoming more attractive because it's like apartment rent is not going down, mm -hmm. and now. I can make twenty dollars an hour, fifteen dollars an hour, and I can go live in a community. I can have my own my own home for, and I can pay kind of similar to either what an average apartment rent is or less. Or I can own my home for fifteen thousand dollars in like three years, four years, whatever the terms look like. So people are starting to realize, like, all right, especially people that are like, you know, like 30, 30 and up. They're like, yo, you know what? It's going downsize. Like we we trying to live in the city and things. Let's go get this mobile home, save some money because you go in the parks. You see Benzes, you see them big <laughs> F four one fifties. Like they yeah. live good because they, their their uh, cost of living is is cheaper. Hmm. And it's a low turnover, right? Yes. Yeah. What about competition? Like, is it a competitive market right now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. I think on all aspects, uh, it's competitive uh, as far as. Um, you know, people come into the space want to buy mobile home communities. Now, what I, mm -hmm. it's still when the last time we spoke uh, institutionally, what I mean by that, like like you know, company like uh, private companies or large institutions only had owned ten percent of the market share. The rest we call mom and pop parks, meaning they just you know they've been in a family, they're you know privately owned. Now that's probably up to the about right around like 13, 15%. So there's still a lot of communities out there. Some people are sitting and holding a value. And then some people are like, you know what? I'm not about to sell to you to come in here and raise the value and push my tenants out. Um, and so it's all about relationships nowadays, right? You got to build a good relationship with somebody who has a community. Um, you know, some people, a lot of park owners, they are older and they like, you know what? My kids don't want this. You know, they look like a nice couple. We'll sell them my mobile home community. <laughs> yeah. And I what about no, I was going to hop in and say, because I know viewers, for the individual home aspect, mm -hmm. I would say that it's not competitive. It's still a very low competition market. If you do, if someone's watching this and they're like, hey, I just still want to get into even the individual space and then transition to the mobile home community space, it's still a great market to get mm -hmm. in as far as that low risk um, involvement in real estate. Yeah, I'm thinking from the standpoint, and I'm glad you said it, it was like, they're cranking out 30 homes a day, mm -hmm. right? You have parks. At some point, do you think, hey, maybe I should design it or create the actual homes to actually sell to people? We have. Yeah. We definitely have. I got a list of all the manufacturers. And, uh, you know, yeah. I honestly look at it like 2023, I want to go into get an acquisition where I buy a, a actual manufacturer company mm -hmm. so we can have. Because what happened with the pandemic did it slow down the production. So it's a lot of park owners who are on still waiting for new homes to come in because right now, like you said, it's 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 a demand. So people are now trying to fill up their parks. It's still like the wild, wild west, meaning whereas you got a, you got a park. Detroit has a park. Rashad got a park. Rashad just bought a park. He got 70 units, all his all filled. You got a park. You got 70 units, but only 50 is filled. So you may come to somebody like, hey, listen, I need some homes. So they can go to Rashad's park mm -hmm. and take money out of Rashad's park by taking, buying a home, taking it out of his park to bring it yours. Now that can cost Rashad anywhere from 20 some thousand dollars plus because he got to fill up his land. And now that's stopped. That's just another home the cash flow is out. So the, the person that actually, he's just going, how's that work? He's going to take it from the lot? <laughs> so here's the thing. <laughs> yeah, so here's the thing. When you own, for example, mobile homes inside of mobile home communities, except in Texas, New Hampshire, Vermont, they are titled just like cars, right? Mm -hmm. So I own the asset once I have that title. I don't necessarily have to have this in the community. So as for us, we try, you know, you want to get tenants on leases and agreements saying, hey, I want to stay in this spot for at least a year. Some people have two, three year commitments, whatever that looks like. So now if I, if let's say I'm not in a, you know, it's, it's, it's Rashad's park and it's your park, I'm gonna bring it to you. If I have the title and Sharnice says, hey, I can help you. I'll sell you. I mean, I'll buy the home from you, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. And she's the highest bidder. She, now she can go buy that home. She's the title owner. And she can go to Rashad like, yo, I'm the title owner. So mm -hmm. unless you're going to give me 30 k for this house, I'm moving it. And Rashad can be like, either I'm going to pay you that or no. All right, mm -hmm. cool. Now she's taking that home to Troy because I, I, she owned the asset. Yeah, so it's like the title, like the deed for the house, the mm -hmm. title mm -hmm. for the car. Yeah. Yeah, got gotcha. you. How do people find mobile home parks? So I know she got the resource, mobilehomeparkstore.com. Yeah. Loopnet.com is another one. Um, Facebook groups, it's a lot mm -hmm. of like mobile home park mastermind Facebook groups. You can find um, park owners or agents that's listing parks. 
um who driving for dollars like mm-hmm. you can still drive around to different communities and if the current owner is there you can get out have a conversation with them and just ask them like hey you know you ever thought about selling or are you thinking about selling yeah. um yeah is, I'll say, I'll is there like like an auction they do auctions for homes mm-hmm. is like auction. It's, com, i know like has for homes like it's more so it, there are some you can find definitely homes, yeah, yeah you can find homes but even for parks they they have some um especially if it's like on tax you know like a tax deed uh you can get those every now and then they have a few i've seen like arizona they have auctions i also tell them give them the google google map play oh yeah google map you can put in your google maps mobile home parks near me in your area and then it literally will show you all of the mobile home parks that's off any highways that's in your area Mm -hmm. so that's another way to see the mobile home parks in your area Mm -hmm. so it's good information so as far as like buying a mobile home park you you have like an inspector come in and they do an inspection mm-hmm. like if you're buying a home but they got to do an inspection for every home or yeah. they just do an inspection for the land more, not they don't inspect the individual home so more so for the land but i would tell you know i would encourage if you definitely get an inspection over the houses as well they so don't you can do yeah. that <laughs> yeah like you have somebody do it each individual house Yep. Just to make sure the maintenance of the houses, because mm-hmm. that could affect you too, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so, for example, but if it's tenant-owned, if the home is, you know, again, the tenant owns, mm-hmm. uh, more so just the, the exterior. How's the appraisals work? Um, so, there are mobile home park appraisals. Um, the process, I don't know, but I will say mm-hmm. I like appraisals, because every time <laughs> a park we have, <laughs> it, we, we always got equity that, within that. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you think that, like, the, like um... For real estate investors, is this something that you would consider, people should consider instead of buying homes, buying uh, mobile home parks, or like in addition to their real estate portfolio? I mean, we know we we gonna be right. providing we, competition now, right. but now you know what though? I would say this: if you want to buy more units for a more a more affordable price, for example, if you buy an apartment building nowadays, the average apartment building per unit you're looking at anywhere from like sixty nine thousand upwards to like eighty nine thousand per unit. Whereas a mobile home park, you're looking at we would like to, we like to find units anyway thirty thousand mm-hmm. and, and less. But you're looking at possibly thirty thousand on the high end. So we see some people like fifty five thousand per unit. So you get more you get more Thank units. You yep, mm-hmm. you get yeah. more units. And for you that. get the land too. You get the land. Exactly. Yep. So every, every time you get to own the land, yeah, buy the park. You every buy. time. Yep. And the beautiful part, of exit strategy. It depends on where your land is. Let's say, God forbid, all the homes are. Now I can go sell it to Home Depot, sell it to Walmart, sell my land to them. So, but those two parks that you sold, why did it appreciate so much though? Because that was like a big appreciation for both of them. Yeah. Was it a reason? Did you like refurbish it, or, or yeah. it's just good timing? P- both, right? Yeah. Just definitely adding the value to it, turning the tenants. Like I said, people are more likely to get a a loan from the fact that if it's tenant owned homes, right? Because they look at it, it's it's more it's riskier if I have if I if if I'm going to own all the homes and then like you said, per- perfect timing after the pandemic, people saw the results, right? Rent rolls. I mean, it was on paper. Rent rolls are looking good. You still looking a lot of, a lot of mobile home park owners. Rent rolls are still like 85 to 90%. Whereas you see an apartment, it's, I mean, you know, they struggling. It was, it was people who weren't even getting 30% of their rent rolls. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it just looked very attractive. And then the cash flow, um, you just saw more and more, comp- more and more companies and investors like, yo, this is kind of safe because, now this is what I've heard from my, <laughs> but they they used to call it basically kind of like a you know like a recess, re, recession resistant asset class because that's what most people are going to come when times are bad you know to a mobile home community. Okay, okay, I got that, I got that. So so it hit, so we got these lands. You said twenty twenty one was a tough year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. At some point, we had to readjust the plan, reassess yes. what we're doing. Mm-hmm. What was that like for both of y'all? Like, you know, <laughs> that that could lead to some tension in the house. Right? You said ten. We still having this wedding, man. Right. <laughs> we gotta hit these numbers. So what was that like? You, you know what? I will say she helped me. St- I was kind of stressing, and as always, <laughs> he's always stressing. <laughs> and uh, she kept, you know, she she definitely kept me level headed. You know, just mm-hmm. look at the bigger picture. Look at what we have. You know, look at what we've been able to create. Uh, and and that did help me. And then I was gonna say, look what we've done, right? So at that point, we were like, 
oh, we want to get so many mobile home parks. But then I think we didn't realize what we created in the educational uh, space as far as, you know, we got over 10,000 students enrolled in our program. So that's another stressor, mm -hmm. and, you know, within <laughs> itself on building the top mobile home investing educa educational program in the country. That comes with, again, we had to build a team around that. So now we have a team of eight under us now just for that alone and then still trying to build our team around the mobile home communities as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so y'all building uh, two different entities, but one's educational and mm -hmm. is still right. practicing in the space. Yes, it's mm -hmm. tough. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah, it's a lot. Do you have a park manager? Yes. So every community has a park manager, and they live there. Uh, mo <clears throat> mostly we offer, but they can live. Uh, without. I think one of them does not live on the community. And they're like the super kind of. Basically, yeah. yep. <laughs> There's like a super. Yeah, the they, difference is they don't fix anything. They they'll mostly call the shots. You know, yeah. they make sure you know they report everything. Yep. Yeah, just to check on everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think the future for mobile homes in America is? <sighs> so <laughs> honestly, I, I so this is the mobile home park space, the manufactured home space, technically kind of threatens the housing sector. Why? Because they're cranked out in a factory. So if, if America really regulated this and said, okay, cool, free will, you guys, everybody can create factories now you're talking about what you're going to do to contractors and builders right because now if we just popping up all these homes up you know factories and we just putting them places that definitely that hurts right so you know it's, it's still regulated um but i see the i mean if you guys you know anybody's that's watching you know you can google 2022 mobile homes manufactured homes and i mean now they're, they're manufacturing townhomes and you know mm -hmm. multi-level floors and things like that so the future as people are looking to downsize or people realize they don't need too much space living in kind of like that minimalistic life um you know it's affordable i think we really we really will see more people in that space you see the tiny home space the container home space you know it's, it's all right right of the same yeah, you're watching those those like assets and saying all right is this competition right because you know we know some people that have tiny home mm -hmm. communities and mm -hmm. nah yeah. so nah. It's completely different completely because for us owning the land Come on, tiny home. Come on, container home. Like right. we got some, we can replace one, those. Right. Yeah. Put them all you you, 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 you could, you could do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about doing that? No, yeah. well, she I has. Have. She loves it. Love, right. I'm like, I have. I love tiny homes. So that's originally what I wanted mm -hmm. to get into before we even got to the mobile home space. What attracted me to mobile homes was the affordability. So you know, tiny homes is kind of like they're on the same lines as regular single family home prices and you know certain markets you can get a tiny home for like seventy thousand. versus like when we first started we didn't have anything so me going out and searching for a mobile home that we can get for three thousand and flip it for ten thousand was more attractive makes more sense yeah mm -hmm. so this is a this is a um a land play really. yeah. yeah yeah it's all land play yeah land yeah. play mm -hmm. you've, been, you've been watching the mcdonald's documentary yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. like the, the primary focus yep yeah. on the land <laughs> but you so all right you buy the land you but you can't do anything you want with the land though right like you can't kick the people off <laughs> technically you can technically but you know again i, I mean for myself living integrity not nah. i, I, I mean, personally want to right. do it. yeah yeah but you can right. yeah you can. so for example we just come to a park in north carolina and he they had i don't know maybe 20 plus homes mm -hmm. and the developer well, he's a developer and he's just like yo like i think they got everybody out of the homes and now sell the rest of these mobile homes and they're going to develop uh apartments so like when you go for financing for this since you're buying land but you're also buying houses. What kind of loan is it? Yeah. So it is a, uh, they do have manufactured, uh, manufactured home uh, community loans specifically just for, this, for, for just for this. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, Fannie, Fannie Mae, um, they actually have a, a certain amount that they have just for manufactured um, home communities um, that they, you know, that they actually allow. I don't, I don't remember the actual number. So, you know, you, you are, we, what we're seeing since we first started, we're seeing more and more lenders now that are, are lending for mobile home parks. And like, what's the requirements? Like same, like you, like tax returns. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, uh, pretty much like a commercial real, right? You know, like same thing. Commercial yeah. real estate. Same mm -hmm. thing. 20% yep. down payment. 
So we was in this space 25, 30%. 30%. So, so we hoping to go down start, to 20. It, it, was it always that? <clears throat> or you've seen it change? We haven't seen, well, so just, I, go ahead. No, I was gonna say just from when we just first started doing this, I would say it's always been kind like of 30, yeah. like 30%, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now go, going back to that, that land play that you said from, let's say like you want to turn it into apartments or you want to call mm-hmm. uh, commercial real estate mm-hmm. or something like that. Do you have to now go back to the zoning laws and go to the county and figure out if we can Yes. Mm-hmm. Same, yeah. Okay. Yeah, same, same process. process. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Then you can refi, probably? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's really the play, honestly. Like, for example, you know, again, just see why. You got to get plays. <laughs> here, go. man. You know, you got to get plays. But, right, um, <laughs> you know, again, if I, find, if I find a community, I add value to it. I want to refinance, right? Because now I can go take that with the equity and I can go put the down payment on another community. And so that's what most are doing, just like, the, you know, the birth strategy, just like with houses, people are doing that with mobile home communities. <laughs> <sighs> what, so I know 10 was the goal last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we set a goal, I mean, it's still early in, in 2022. We've set a goal for this year? Yeah. I don't even want you to say that. Like, <laughs> right. you tell me the goal. <laughs> we gonna hold you to it. <laughs> uh, I got bad luck with mine. <laughs> right. But there's a, there's a number that, we, that we're like, you know what, realistically, we can hit this number. Yes. yes. Uh, the, cause why? Because we, we're rolling out a mobile home park fund. Mm-hmm. And so that allows us each quarter to buy multiple. And so the mm-hmm. goal is to get three to four communities a quarter and now allow opportunity for more people to come as passive investors to get the to learn how to do it. And again, we always talk about we've been always talking about group economics, but a lot mm-hmm. of people don't look like us that do this. Mm-hmm. So now it's like oh, we open up the doors. Right. I think we know what three three black mobile home park. Almost. Yeah. So in this space, and it may be right. more, but we don't necessarily know them. So for us, we now we want to each quarter, we want to say, hey, we got 10 more. You got 10 more. You got 10 more. And that, again, that allows us to buy. It allows us to buy more. And then for us, you know, kind of stepping now into that fund space. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that's that's the next thing for us. So the, the fund, we can actually invest in it. How, yes. How does this work? T- talk to me. Yeah. So um, the fund. We'll have general partners, limited partners. The fund for us, uh, I don't know if I can say that numbers, I got to holler ace, <laughs> but, uh, but okay, I'll get hypothetical, right? So let's say the fund, we say, hey, you know what? Our general partners, we want to put 60,000 a piece, right? The goal is we want to say, we want to raise a um, million dollars. And that million, the goal is to take that million to become down payments for each community. So that's mm-hmm. how we get more. Instead of just buying e- these parks all right cash, now right those the, within a million, we can find as many parks as we can. Let allow that be the down payment. We go get, go get outside financing. So now what we're able to do is, hey, we own. Let's say we own five million dollars in assets. The goal is to get a larger fund and look at us, add value. While we're adding value, you want a larger fund to say, you know what, look look at that. That's sustainable. Okay, let me let me go get them seven million for that. Mm-hmm. And now we make sure we take care of all of our investors. Um, what's some of the biggest issues with the part? Like is it environmental issues? Is it tenants? Mm-hmm. Like what's some some of the downsides that can be hurtful? Mm, yeah. Yeah, I would say definitely tenants, um, maintenance issues. Um, I think just across the board and even traditional real estate and mobile homes, finding a reliable handyman and contractor and even just a handyman team has been like the biggest issues I would say we have solved. Yeah, and then the worst what happens is if you don't do your due diligence, what we've seen people actually go in and buy a community and not consult with the county, mm-hmm. not get the okay. And so if you you definitely want to be on the you know the the good side of with the with the city and the county because we've seen people get a lot of trouble right because what happens is they'll buy something it's the, the city's like yo that's already like ugly we want right. that out of there and you bought that <laughs> and you're not doing nothing to that mm-hmm. so now you're gonna have I mean they gonna come in look for everything code violations everything you know just yeah. to you know so that's that's what we've seen people have a lot of headaches with as well um so. Talking about you also scaled the education a mm-hmm. lot, right? Yeah. Um, from the last time that we spoke. Mm-hmm. So talk about that. You talked about your, your students having like, I think 10,000 students and mm-hmm. things of that nature. So uh, how has that been as far as scaling that? Talk about some of maybe the success stories. Yeah. And so we actually brought on a head coach. So I got a shout out Nicole Briscoe. Shout she out Nicole. She's mobile home mommy. But so... The beautiful thing, what I love about Nicole's story is that she was one of our first students that hit six figures in less than six months. So Nicole had netted 181,000. 
um, in six months from wholesaling individual mobile homes and then doing some on uh, seller finance through payments. So she reached out to us. I think she hopped on the IG live with us Mm -hmm. and I loved her energy. And I told Byron, I said, you know, we got to think about scaling our educational program because kind of like you talked about, Troy, it's hard to, you know, have our hats fully in the Mm -hmm. investing side Mm -hmm. and try to, you know, have the number one program in the world as well. So I told him, like, I think we should bring somebody on. And she was my first choice. So we ended up bringing her on. And now she has our mentorship program, um, which is a 12 month program that we do and that program is really to scale an individual to a six-figure earner um, like herself and then then get them to the seven-figure earner like us and scale them to buying you know mobile home communities as well yeah and it's, it's been a blessing you know I think that uh, I remember uh, I had some queens pray over me one time and I remember they was just like you're a teacher like a teacher like, all things I'm a teacher you know but it was fun right you know just being with the people you know being online you know being able just to share game and just you know you seeing the impact and then definitely to be able to do it with her you know it's just it's, it's super dope that you know we get a chance to share our knowledge you know see people change their lives and you know even like you said scale our team uh, my best friend growing up right my best friend is even on our team and I, I got that from you all right seeing what y'all been able to do and, and you know it's just like yo like you know having my guy shout out my guy Gerald um, even on the squad and it's just like um, the impact we've been able to do you know for other people's lives um, man it's it's been inc- it's been incredible man to share stages right you know really? share stages with yeah. so many other uh, financial literacy educators out here and just see how genuine everybody is like every time we see each other it's all love we might not right. see each other for months but it's always love you know so yeah. that's the dope part so um, it's kind of like a mentorship type program yes mm-hmm. where you say you, you start off and you teach them the basics of like buying mobile homes, individual mm-hmm. mobile homes, and then scaling it to the point where they could potentially buy mobile home parks. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's like a step-by-step process. Yes. Mm-hmm. With like Zoom calls, things that they should. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yep, Zoom calls. Um, and then we actually, we created a, a bus tour. We actually take mm-hmm. them out to a community. So we'll be, you know, a city that, um, that we have a relationship with a community. Uh, we ain't took them in the hours yet because it's been cold. <laughs> so, um, you know, we'll take them out there and we even give them opportunities. We've had students buy homes at the, at the, you know, where we, you know, the parks that we take them to and it's just giving that hands on. But for us, it's big, like, we want them to be able to touch us, right? We want them to be, it was not like we Hollywood, like, all right, y'all, see y'all from a distance. It's more like, no, nah, come on, we're going to come break bread with y'all. Like, come yeah, and sit down, ask us, full weekend. pick our brain. Mm-hmm. Like, while you there with us, like, everything that we have, we're going to pour into them. And then after that, we bring on more and more uh, people's skill, whether it's, you know, a business credit, uh, whether it's, you know, mobile home um, on private land. Like, it's, we keep we continue pouring mobile homes into them and we've been able to out of that we've had some six figure earners we've had you know multiple five i mean just countless five figure earners but and then for us we want to build within so that this brand mobile home elite investors just it lasts forever and it's bigger than just me and sharnice so y'all y'all what so uh, that was pretty key you said that a lot of some of the students actually get to purchase from your your properties. Yes, mm-hmm. but do you also make sure and go out to secure their first property as well? That's the goal. Yeah. Like that's the really goal. Like it's so it's it's an intense program. Like Nicole, what I love about it, man, she a real coach. So she mm-hmm. is on they ass, mm-hmm. and because we care though, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and that's the thing. Like I, I always tell people, like don't. Don't invest. Don't invest in this if you don't really see yourself doing. It. If you want the information, cool. Just watch all of YouTube. Watch everything for free, mm-hmm. right? But if you're serious, that's when I want you to invest. I don't want your money if you just this is you know just just something, right? And so um, you know it's it's we make sure that we put as much you know we can. I mean, like they say, you you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So we try our best to give them as much resources. If we got to push their head in the water, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's one of these things where it's like, like I said, there's no college for it. There's no, Mm -hmm. you know, um, education that you can go to a university. So, Mm -hmm. you know, the online space has become universities, especially for these type of niche learning, like trucking, mobile home investing, mobile home park buying. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I mean, there's always free information as far as on YouTube and Google, Mm -hmm. things of nature. But when you're talking about mentorship Mm -hmm. and like Mm -hmm. more of a hands on situation, um, that's a lot different. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's just, like you said, it's not for everybody. Facts. But for people that actually do want to take the next step. So, um, with that being said, uh, we're going to do something special for EYL and, mm-hmm. um, you know, always try to do something a little different. Take care of the family. Yeah. <laughs> so. And anybody that has an offering, we try to get like a special discount and you guys have been uh, willing to oblige. So we appreciate that. So it's actually two offerings. So, 
The website is mobile homes with a S E Y L dot com. And you have the regular course that you have. That's like a mm-hmm. self um, go as you, you go mm-hmm. program where, mm-hmm. you know, it's just use videos and, and you just learn. Um, and that you're going to do a thousand dollars off. Right. Yes, sir. That. Of I course. Appreciate that. And then the more advanced, more the mentorship, that's mm-hmm. the hands on. Mm-hmm. That's where you actually get the Zoom calls mm-hmm. and actually go on the bus ride mm-hmm. and and get, you know, be part of the community and yeah. actually like, you know, actually go from the steps of buying your first home to, you know, potentially buying your first mobile park. Yep. Yep. And for that, um, you're going to do two thousand dollars off. Yes, right? sir. Mm-hmm. Yep. So I appreciate that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So you can go to mobilehomeseyl.com and, uh, you know, check it out if, if you're interested in furthering. Mm-hmm your education and taking it to the next level because like i said i mean i think this is something that is interesting mm-hmm. I, I, um you know the first time was very interesting as yeah. far as the mobile home mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but then the mobile home park like i said even the land that's what really gets my attention like yeah. the land mm-hmm. like you literally mm-hmm. in a position where you can actually purchase land and that's that's everything facts. We, we're facts. in a race for land in this world yeah. so you know, whoever fact. owns the land owns owns yeah. everything they're making more of it facts <laughs> <laughs> very true yeah so what's next what's what's next for you guys yeah man so you know concentrating on the fun yeah. um and you know i think for us continuing to uh cultivate our students you know i yeah. think that that's the biggest thing like we said that far as the brand charnice and i realize um uh, you know we're getting married july 2nd of this year right so right. Um, uh, thank you thank, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. right life, you know hopefully after that comes a family so yeah. life gonna change we can't be at the forefront yeah. all the time so like you said that's why we're trying to build our students up you know started with nicole we want to eventually have a full team of coaches across mm-hmm. the country yeah. that are teaching mobile home investing in each market so that's our biggest goal with yeah. that it's gonna be fun. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Super fun, man. Uh, I, man, I always appreciate y'all, man. It's always dope linking with you guys, man. Uh, Truly yeah. appreciate right, y'all. You was on our yeah. first event too. Yeah, yeah. First sure event was. In, uh, in DC, DC yeah. December 9th, twenty nineteen. Mm-hmm. It was you, Rashana Sky, and Wall Street Trapper. Trapper, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was his first time speaking to like a, a group of people. Yeah, that, that, that was crazy. That was my first time too. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah, lot yeah, of yeah, firsts. <laughs> So, a lot has changed since then, <laughs> for sure. But definitely, congratulations. Proud of you guys, for sure. Yeah, thank, thank you all. so much. How can the people stay in touch? Like, what's the website? What's the social media handles? All that stuff. Yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. So, uh, definitely Instagram is one of our heavy sites, uh, mm-hmm. at Mobile Home Elite Investors. Same thing. That's our Facebook, at Mobile Home Elite Investors. You can watch us on YouTube. We got so much just free stuff out there. Uh, you can type in Mobile Home Elite Investors or MH Elite Investors website, Mobile Home Elite Investors.com. Um, man, that's everything for us. Yep. <laughs> Anything you want to say, Ernest? Man, I just want to say thank y'all again for having us come back. Definitely appreciate y'all. And for everybody watching, I hope to see y'all in the mobile home space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> come join us in the mobile home space. Yeah, <laughs> Troy, I was keeping right yeah on. man. I just want to say personally how proud I am of y'all. Right, thank um, thank to you. To see your growth from Bureau in, yeah. in 2019 <laughs> to 10,000 students is, mm-hmm. is remarkable. And it was one of those first success stories, like you said, like it was the biggest episode that we had put out at the time. Mm-hmm. And we always like to say, like the like the, the the match was lit, but yeah. the gasoline was poured. Mm-hmm. And y'all have definitely done that. So congratulations on that. Thank, Thank and you. And I know twenty twenty one, you know, wasn't the greatest year for you, mm-hmm. but there's a something that was missing. And that was an EYL episode. Mm. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> two times, so, two times. I mean, you know how this thing works. So shout right. out to y'all first and foremost, and shout out to all the earners out there. Thank you. All of y'all, man, across the world, not even just the United States. I want to say all our global earners. Shout out to all of y'all. Um, y'all have just been spreading the word of EYL and the, the word of financial literacy. So thank you, and thank you for all your support. Shout out to all mm-hmm. our patrons on uh, Patreon. And uh, shout out to everybody in the merch team. Shout out to all our people in EYL University. We got a, The team has grown. Mm-hmm. So we got a lot of people over there. We got some professors. Uh, so shout out to them. And uh, yeah, keep rocking with us. Thank you guys for rocking with us. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. My graduates from my school being Forbes. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>